Previously on Homebrew for Life, CH got way too vulnerable and talked about the behind the curtain of their shitty little online beer YouTube channel. He also promised at least two videos a month for all of 2020. It is already the last week of January. Let's see if these guys are full of shit. What's going on guys, CH and Superbro for Life, AKA Superbro, Kevin Tyrese, 10 years younger than me, makes me feel better. AKA Young Braj Mahal. Today we're making severe beer pot pie. It's the most delicious thing I've ever had. But we gotta come clean, it ain't our recipe. Mm -mm. Whose is it? You may have heard of Triple H. There's actually a more powerful man out there that goes by the name of Triple G. That's right, Triple G, good guy Greg. He was originally the homie that first let us cook in his kitchen. He brought us all together over beer and good food. He taught us how to eat good and drink good. He taught us how to play rubber ducky without the ducky. He's the father of all of our children. We wish we could say that we created this recipe, but we can't. Actually, we don't even know where good guy Greg is. Hopefully he's doing well somewhere out there. He moved far, far away. No one's heard of him for five years. But the show's gotta go on. Let's talk about the loot. All ingredients and step-by-step -step instructions will be in the description, but I want to say a few things. Quiet, quiet, he's gonna say something. First, always go with frozen veggies whenever you can. The carrots will be cut and ready to go. As for the onions, I don't even think you can buy the sweet, delicious baby onions in the produce section. These little baby onions are mouth-watering. Ramekins, AKA oven-proof bowls. Throw an Amazon link in the bio for this. Use these ramekins or you're gonna have ramifications. For the beer, snag a pint of your favorite brown ale. There is no substitute. Brown ale and brown ale only. We're gonna be using Easy Rider Brown from my buddy's brewery in Oceanside. Check out this brewery. I'll tell you a little secret about this place. It's pretty chill. Next step. <laughs> All right, let's preheat the oven to 350 degrees. All right, now in your mac and cheese pot, let's heat up the beef stock and the bouillon on medium heat. Here's a little life hack, fam. This stuff tastes extremely delicious as is. Tastes just like a juice sauce. Maybe it is a juice sauce. Dip your hoagie in there. Snag a large pot. Now hit it with some oil on medium high. While our pot is heating up, let's get our beef dialed in, fam. Hold on, I wanna say three things. Three things about the meat. First, the cheaper the meat, the better. Boneless. No bones. Boneless. Boneless and no bones. And we want no fat, I know. A steak lovers out there, we like the fat on that. Gives a taste. But for this recipe, we're cutting this steak up into cubes and we don't wanna be chewing on a piece of fat. All right, stay focused. Where we at fam? Let's get this meat going. All we're really looking to do here is just brown the sides. Keep an eye on it. Low to medium heat, Braj. Let's pull out our Pillsbury Tasty Sheets from the freezer. I want to have them at room temp before they go into the oven for about 10 minutes. Always never forget, fam, when you're going with the pastry sheets, do not cut corners. None of that Vaughn's Safeway brand trash. All right, let's get our meat off to the side here now. Clean your large pot or use another large pot and hit it with one and a half sticks of unsalted butter on medium heat. Now is the absolute perfect time in your existence to snag your veggies from your freezer. Throw them in frozen. Saute this toy's food. You're going to know when it's ready, when the baby onions get translucent. Taters? Let's cut up a let's cut up a potato. Let's cut up a potato. Let's cut a potato. And uh, tune into next week's video where we do a tutorial on how to cut up a potato. And Geronimo! Looking good, fam. Looking good. Let's get on that flour train. Chase it with some heavy cream. Now let's add everything together. Our meat, beef stock, stir, and now most importantly, our brown ale. Okay, uh, uh, I'm kind of lost at this, at this point. Are you blowing it again, bro? Well, I forgot kind of where the recipe goes from here. Oh, fuck, dude. Is Was that the door? Was that the door? Is that your boyfriend? Is that your mom? If that's the cops or the landlord, tell them I'm dead. Well, you are dead. No, I'm serious, man. Landlord? I don't know. Your boyfriend? I gotta get out of here. It's either the cops or your mom for, you know. Fuck! 
pisses me off. My bad, man. I know. I know. We can't do it like you can, nah, Triple we G. Been bad, dude. We need you. <laughs> Greg, we have been blowing it, man. Thank you so much for showing up. You guys really fucking us up. We're only human, man. Is there anything we can do? Yeah. Go drink some beer. I thought you never asked. <laughs> can, we hey. be, can we at least be in the background? I'll take it from there. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna throw a little bit of flour down on the surface. Don't want it to stick. And now, so you want this, the phyllo dough to feel a little bit wet. You get two of these to a pack, so make sure you know that. And now what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be cutting the phyllo dough so it has about a half inch to three quarters of an inch around the side. Why are you doing that? Well, you're gonna end up pinching it and you're gonna be using an egg wash to put this nicely cut top on top of your pastry. Egg wash, what the hell is egg wash? It's an egg that you add just a little bit of water to and it's really a glue is what you're gonna be doing as you're baking. So you're gonna put it right around the edges and you're gonna be draping this over the top and pinching it on the sides. Because, you know, it's all about baking. It, anyone can make a steak, but only a real man can bake. Next step. This is the trip, the best part I really like. You know what time it is, fam. M. B. C. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Man, you <laughs> message! You goddamn right I got a message, fam. When is somebody gonna stand up against the beer ego man? You know what I'm talking about. These $18 four packs I see on every shelf of every goddamn store. My whole life, your whole life, growing up, it was always singles, six pack, and up. Who's the asshole that started the trend of the four pack and started charging more? Less beer for more? Beer isn't supposed to cost an arm and a dick, man. We're putting our feet down. We're raising awareness not to get ripped off anymore. If you want to raise awareness too, then shop the first official Homebrew for Life store in the history of the planet universe. And also help support my invisible children. Don't let my invisible children grow up with crooked teeth, fam. Homebrewforlife.com ships worldwide. Buy a t-shirt and I'll drop your name in tomorrow night's video. Now, take your shirt off. Let's see what's going on with that chest behind there. Yeah, you're on, bro. Thank you for watching this week's video. And as always, cheers to eating good and drinking good. That's right. Like, uh, like KFC mashed potatoes. That one was hot. Was it? Yeah.